Gold, the most precious of metals. Its alluring color, luster, and malleability have made it one of the most coveted substances throughout human history. For thousands of years, gold's radiance and perceived value have driven exploration, trade, technological innovation, and conflict. Entire empires rose and fell with the tides of gold. Today, it remains a highly sought-after precious metal, serving as an investment, jewelry material, and status symbol. But where does gold come from, and how does it get refined into the treasure we know today? In this video, we'll explore the origins of gold and follow the intricate modern process of how raw gold ore is discovered, mined, and transformed into pure, shiny gold coins and bars. Gold begins its life cycle buried deep underground. It's formed when hot, mineral-rich fluids circulate through rock, altering pre-existing rocks and depositing the gold into veins, faults, and other geological formations. Geologists search for gold deposits by analyzing surface rocks, soil composition, and vegetation in areas likely to contain gold. Promising spots are staked out and sampled by drilling exploratory boreholes and test pits. Once surveys accurately map out the gold ore body's location, shape, and size, larger-scale mining can commence. The type of mining used depends on the characteristics of the ore body and its location. High-grade oxide gold ores located near the surface are extracted economically via open-pit mining methods. Lower-grade ore bodies buried deeper underground may require more selective mining techniques. In open-pit mines, the layers of dirt and rock, called overburden, above the ore deposit, are blasted and removed with heavy machinery. The ore is then extracted from the resulting pits using excavators or loaders. Haul trucks transport the ore to processing facilities. At the gold processing plant, the ore is first crushed into a fine powder. Crushing the ore increases the surface area, ensuring optimal contact with processing chemicals. It's crushed in stages using gyratory crushers, cone crushers, and impact mills until only fine particles remain. The powdered ore then undergoes milling. Tumbling mills, rod mills, or ball mills further grind the ore into even finer material, using steel rods or balls constantly rolling and tumbling inside rotating drums. Once the gold ore has been thoroughly ground into fine powder, a chemical slurry or leaching agent is mixed in. For oxide-type gold ores, a dilute alkaline cyanide solution is introduced to dissolve and separate the gold from the ore. This pregnant leach solution containing the gold is then collected and processed. Refractory sulfide-associated gold ores require pretreatment to oxidize the sulfides before leaching. Oxidation methods include pressure oxidation, biological oxidation, roasting, or a combination thereof. Next, the gold-bearing leachate solution passes through columns filled with activated carbon granules. The carbon material attracts the gold, absorbing it and extracting it from the solution. After percolating through several carbon columns to ensure full extraction, the now barren leach solution is recycled back to the leaching process plant. The gold-rich carbon is instead sent to a stripping facility for gold recovery. Here, the loaded carbon undergoes a process called elution. The carbon granules are placed inside columns and a hot caustic cyanide solution is passed through. This reverses the adsorption process, freeing and stripping the concentrated gold from the carbon back into the solution. The gold-pregnant eluant from elution then undergoes electrowinning. Steel wool cathodes are suspended in electrowinning cells, and an electric current pulls the gold onto the cathodes in a pure metallic form. After washing, filtering, and drying the cathodes, the final product is rough gold sludge ready for melting. The sludge is combined with fluxes and charged into a crucible, then placed in a smelting furnace heated to over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The extreme temperature melts the gold, separating it from leftover impurities. The molten gold can be poured into molds such as bricks or bars for easy handling and transport. But the journey isn't over yet. These raw gold bars are still relatively impure and require further refinement, so it's off to a precious metals refinery. Here the crude bars are melted again and often mixed with borax and other fluxes to capture any remaining impurities. What's left is 99.9% .9 pure molten gold, which can finally be cast into gold coins, bars, or jewelry fit for consumers. The result is beautiful, glittering gold, the end product of an intricate, millennia-old process melding science, technology, and muscle. And there you have it, the long, arduous journey gold undertakes from hidden ore to radiant ingots, coins, and adornments. Of course, we've just scratched the surface of the complex, multifaceted science and painstaking effort involved in gold mining and refining. It requires immense technical knowledge, capital investment, advanced technology, favorable geology, economics, and environmental responsibility, not to mention the backbreaking labor of working in mines and processing plants. 
But as long as we remain enthralled by gold's seductive glow and enduring worth, the quest for this king of precious metals will doubtlessly continue.